Hello my friends and welcome to this video today. So in today's video I want to do an experiment. I want to see how detailed a photo can get. I mean I talked about that like for example these 60 megapixel or 100 megapixel sensors in cameras they aren't really necessary for most things but we have them I have them in my Sony a7R 4 for example and I want to see how far I can bring it by using the pixel shift mode to boost the 60 megapixels to 240 megapixels and I also want to use AI features in Lightroom to enhance the resolution even further. And as you can see, I am in the woodlands in nature right now. And uh, it is autumn, we have October. However, the autumn colors, they aren't really there. So I have to see what I can do. There are some trees that already have this beautiful yellow, orange, reddish colors. You know, we all love them, we all know them. However, most trees don't have these colors. So we will have to see, I will get on now and I see if I can find a beautiful composition because if we want to take the most detailed photo ever, then it should be a pretty good composition, I believe. So yeah, let's head on now and see what we can do. So this scenery behind me that you can more or less see right now, it is my first try to find a nice composition. This will not be the peak I believe today, hopefully not, but I just want to get to used to the process because I have never used the pixel shift mode because who needs more than 60 megapixels, honestly. I am using a polarization filter uh, in order to eliminate a little bit of these reflections in the leaves. It is a little bit wet on the ground today, it rained in the morning, now it is quite sunny honestly, it's, it's a little bit unexpected, I thought it would be overcasted today. Nonetheless, I will try out different compositions now and see how this is going. So I think I've found somewhat of a nice composition here. Um, we have this ferns in the foreground basically, then we have the trees in the background. Again, we don't have the most stunning autumn colors here or ever. The ferns, they have a little bit of this brownish reddish color to it because it is autumn, as I said. And I think this kind of looks good. We will have to see later. And I also did a panoramic shot. So I did multiple exposures, all with pixel shift. And uh, yeah, basically we have like 720 megapixels, not quite because, you know, it overlaps a little bit. And uh, yeah, later we will do the enhancement in Lightroom. So we will see where we get this thing. It will be huge fire sizes, that is for sure. right now very good but this is something I am yeah taking a closer look at now because we have this yeah beautiful colors autumn colors in this tree right there and we have a lot of yeah this plain tree stems here which appear to be pretty white and uh, yeah that could be a nice contrast I don't know I will go there now and see if I can find something or something equivalent to that we will see So I focused myself on two or three different compositions here and I just waited. I waited here until the light changed, you know, we have sunlight. I didn't expect that today, honestly, which is somewhat of a burden because, you know, I'm here in the middle of the day. We have like 10 a.m. right now, so it's not sunrise or sunset and I expected it to be overcasted the whole day, which isn't necessarily bad if you want to take landscape pictures. It always depends a little bit on what you want to take. But for example, I don't want to take pictures of the blue sky at the moment because the sun really burns down from above. It looks beautiful. But this is the reason why I yeah, switched to this location here where we have a lot of trees and the sunlight, yeah, it kind of falls between the trees, which creates a nice effect. 
at least I hope so. We will see in the pictures later. As I said, I took a lot of panoramic shots so I can stitch them together later. And I'm really, really curious how the results are gonna turn out because yeah, it should get us a ton of detail. I am very curious how we, how far we can yeah, zoom in basically later. So let's head home now and then we will develop the pictures basically and see what we got. So after arriving back at home I transferred all the files over to my computer and then I used a program called Pixel Shift to DNG so I could basically just select the folder and let the program stitch all these photos together and from 450 initial pictures after stitching them together and after creating the panoramic shots, I ended up with six final pictures and I somewhat liked this process. It was really slow, but it reminded me a little bit of, yeah, the old analog days where you had to develop your photos first and that also obviously took time. And at this time, basically the problem started because I imported the DNG files into Lightroom and it was just insanely slow. I mean, it is a little bit to be expected when you work with file sizes that huge, however, it was barely usable the whole program Photoshop wasn't better so yeah I talk about that in a second right now but it was a really really painstakingly slow process so here we have our final images I showed you the previews while I took these photos but now we have yeah the final product basically so every single one of these photos is stitched together from basically 48 individual pictures so basically we have 16 photos that were combined via the pixel shift method and then we had three of these photos and I stitched together three of them so that they become yeah this final panoramic shot I tried to keep the compositions quite simple however I wanted to include things that have a lot of details like for example these small yeah plants these ferns here down here or the trees as you can see and as you can also see I kept the editing very very simple just a little bit of basic post-production here nothing too crazy I tried to enhance the light a little bit uh, with a with a radial mask here up in the left corner and <laughs> you, you just saw it maybe um, yeah stitching together these photos and editing them was an absolute pain in the ass I have a MacBook Pro with an M2 Max processor so not the newest one in the world however a pretty pretty fast processor and yeah, it took like five minutes per picture to stitch them together and uh, it's just absolutely annoying to work with file sizes like that. And this brings us to the final megapixel count. So we have a round 400 megapixels per picture. However, this does not include the AI scale up. Unfortunately, Photoshop and Lightroom as well, they have a limit on how far you can bring this and the limit is at 500 megapixels. So basically we have a 400 megapixel photo here and I would scale it up two times in every direction. We would end up with at least four times as much. So with at least 1600 megapixels. So this was not possible. You could obviously cut these photos in slices basically and enhance every slice one after the other. That would be possible. Um, I did this for for one picture for this one here so as I said I ended up with around 1500 megapixels so one and a half gigapixels which is insane but I found that the photo does not become so much more detailed with it so I skipped this for the other photos because as I said it is an absolute pain in the ass to work with a photo this big. If you want to see the results in more detail feel free to check the link in the description I have a link to my Google Drive where I uploaded these photos in full detail and you can download them there and take a closer look at yourself and again I know basically that this experiment is a little bit useless because obviously no one needs file sizes and picture sizes so huge but still I wanted to see how far I can bring this and I think I got it pretty far so let me know in the comments what your sweet spot for a resolution for an image is and what you think makes sense and what doesn't make sense. This one obviously doesn't make sense. It is way too much. As I said, it was really fun to do so except for the editing and this is the reason why I most likely will never do something like this again because yeah, waiting five minutes for a picture and having yeah the computer to become so slow that it's nearly unusable. It is really, really a pain in the ass. So yeah, that is for that. I have a ton of other photography related videos over on my channel so if you want to feel free to check them out as well. A lot of different topics. 
But for now, I wish you a great day. I wish you a great weekend. I hope I see you in next week's video. So see you then and goodbye.